Hello fellow sim magicians and welcome to a brand new series that we like to call Tech Tuesday. Hi, I'm Alvin and in this series we will take you through all of our lineups and take a look into their specialties, features and all the nuances that you can think of and we're going to dive deep into them one by one in each episode. And in today's first episode, we're going to kick things off with the P1000 pedals and specifically we're going to talk about these things, the Hamtic motors. All right, so before we dive into the Hamtic motors itself, we need to understand how an anti-lock braking system works. And for those of you who don't know what ABS is, it's basically a system that is existing within the car to stop the car from locking up its wheel from excessive braking. And to better visualize the whole braking system in general, I have the P2000 hydraulic braking module right here to better visualize this system and how exactly does that work. So for a real car's braking system, you have a few components. So firstly being obviously the pedals, and then you have the main pump, which pumps the fluid from the container through the tube into the side pump. Now on the real car, it will be a caliper and a brake disc, but obviously this is the P2000 braking module. So we only have a side pump and a few springs over here, but you can kind of imagine it being the same thing. The side pump being the caliper, which applies pressure to the brake pad and then generate friction on the brake disc and therefore slow the car down. And on the P2000, it's more or less working on the same mechanism, except for the part that it doesn't generate actual friction to slow the car down. But rather than that, we have the low cell over here to detect how much force you've been applied and then transfer that directly into the gate. So what is a lockup, you may ask? Well, a lockup is a phenomenon that occurs when you apply excessive braking pressure. And what do I mean by excessive is that when your braking pressure exceeds the amount of grip that your tire allows. As we all know, tires have a fixed amount of grip and you can only do so much with it. So when you apply too much braking pressure, the tires aren't holding up onto that but the brakes are going to continue to slow the wheel down. So what happens is that the wheel is going to slow down individually without being properly applied to the car and chop down the momentum that the car has. And this is what you would call a lockup. And this is when an ABS comes in. Now an ABS is basically a C CPU that sits in between the main pump and the side pump, and it's constantly monitoring the wheel speed at any given point. Now if it detects a certain wheel is dropping too quickly in terms of wheel speed, it's gonna activate and blow off the brake pressure. Now for blow off, you can kind of think about it as a turbo wastegate blow off on turbocharged cars. But here, obviously, it's for the braking pressure. Now, it's gonna activate, blow off the brake pressure and release that pressure from the brake disc and allowing the wheel to spin normally again. Now, obviously, when it detects that the wheel is going back onto normal, it's gonna deactivate. But when it detects that the wheel is dropping too quickly, again, it's gonna activate. So for ABS, it's in the constant activate and deactivate cycle and doing it about 20 to 50 times per second, depending on the car that you're driving. And that constant blow off, release, and restoring brake pressure cycle is the feedback that you get from activating an ABS whenever you're feeling that rumble on the pedals. So what does all that have to do with the Hamtic motors, I hear you ask? Well, good question. Now I'm going to go into why the Hamtic motors is tied to how the ABS works and why we chose specifically for the Hamtic motors instead of the regular rumble motors that you find on the market. So, like I've just mentioned, the ABS is going through a constant activate and deactivate cycle very rapidly in a short amount of time. And that constant blow off and restore brake pressure rapidly, it's gonna create sort of a rumble to the brake pedals. And for haptic motors, since this thing is working in a back and forth motion, the rumble that it creates to the pedal is very similar to that of a real life ABS system. There's quite a few differences between our haptic motors and the regular rumble motors as well. Now for a regular rumble motors, it works in a rotating motion. And for our haptic motors, it works in a linear back and forth motion. 
And what this fundamental difference means is there's quite a few difference between the two. The one thing being is that for a Hamtic motor, it's going to require less energy compared to a rumble motor the same size. And therefore, it's going to have a power and output advantage compared to a rumble motor the same size. The second thing being is that for a rumble motor, the circular motion is going to require more energy and more momentum to spool up and therefore it's going to take time. And what it means is that it's going to feel less immediate and less responsive compared to a haptic motor. And the most important thing of it all is that for Given how ABS works in a real car, a Hamtic Motors is more accurate in terms of recreating that feedback on a pedal. And that is the reason why we specifically gone for a Hamtic Motor for the P1000 modular pedals. So that's all for the Hamtic Motors. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe to our channel and follow us on various social media platforms if you haven't already. This is Tech Tuesday and I hope to see you in future episodes of this series. But until then, keep racing, sim magicians.